So who should be the nominee? Any person to whom I want the asset to be easily handed over after my death should be the nominee. And ideally, it should be the person who I want to inherit. Hello and welcome to Invest Smart, a show where we talk about all things related to your savings, your money, and your investments. I'm Avni Raja. On today's show, we're picking up a very important topic that is naming a nominee for your investments. Now, there's often a lot of confusion about the role that a nomination plays, uh, you know, because it helps in a lot of ways, but it also doesn't help in some ways in terms of the process of transfer of your asset to whoever you want uh, it to be transferred to. So there is some misunderstanding on that front, and that's what we're going to try and uh, clarify for you today and answer all of your questions related to this whole process of nominations. Now, joining me to do this is Harsh Rungta. Uh, Harsh, thank you so much for joining us uh, on the show. Now, of course, there are several aspects to cover here, and I want to break this down, uh, you know, part by part. But let me start off with the larger question. Uh, and just to understand for our viewers, uh, if you can just explain the concept of nomination and who it is that one should put down as a nominee when it comes to one's investments or one's property. So I think uh, nomination is a typical Indian uh, jugaad that we came up with, uh, given the fact that, you know, uh, properties needed to be, I mean, your various assets needed to be transferred easily after uh, your death. Uh, and yet the court processes, etc., take forever. There is, you know, a lot of uh, procedural uh, delays and issues surrounding that. So I think nomination came as a typical Indian solution uh, to a problem. Uh, they had, uh, so, you know, till the 40s or 50s, 1940s or 1950s, you know, they're really the only real assets that a person used to have either was the ancestral property uh, or primate if they were in working then they had provident fund and therefore nomination first come came in the provident fund act whether it was the uh, indian provident fund act or the uh, you know the employees provident fund act 1952 uh, i think slowly as more and more of us started having assets and you know the disputes started rising more importantly the money stuff sort of start started getting frozen is when the banking uh, regulation act was amended in 1980 uh, to provide for nominee uh, and then the uh, securities uh, uh, scra and the companies act was amended and the mutual fund nomination rules were put into place so I think over a period of time, the nomination has been, uh, the nomination provisions have been put in place to ease the process of transfer. Uh, so to answer to answer your question, let me give a let me give my example, right? Uh, so I'm a Hindu male, spouse and two adult children. My parents are not alive. Uh, and therefore, if I was to die without making any uh, nomination and without leaving a bill, which means I will then be governed by the provisions of the Hindu Succession Act, uh, then all my assets, all, okay? And let's say I have one property, uh, I have one bank account, and I have uh, one uh, mutual fund and one share in a DMAT account. Let's say those are the only four assets I have. All four of them, one third each, will go to uh, to my son, uh, my daughter, and my spouse. Right, right. But to get access to that, they would have to go to court and obtain a uh, letter of administration uh, from the court uh, to be able to take what the personal law, my, the personal law that governs me, what it allows. So it's a very cumbersome process. Instead of doing that, if I was to name them as the nominees, okay, then the transfer happens immediately. 
the transfer happens immediately they still need to go to court basically okay to the transfer is the ease of transfer is of the property itself the title passes only through a court order okay right, right. Uh, and i don't know whether that sort of clarified for you so who should be the nominee any person to whom i want the asset to be easily handed over after my death should be the nominee and ideally it should be the person who i want to inherit so in my case i want my spouse to inherit right yes. so i have yes. my spouse as my nominee uh, but please remember though so spouse will get my uh, uh, property she will become the shareholder in the society in which i hold the property she will be able to get the mutual funds transferred to her she will be able to get the shares transferred to her she will be able to get the bank account transferred to her and she will be able to get the life insurance policy uh, that i have in which she is the nominee all this money is will come to her okay yeah. but in the absence of a will okay one third each my children are entitled to so they can demand it from her surely yeah. because yeah. merely because i have made her a nominee does not give her a ownership title except life insurance which we can discuss uh, little yes. later yes and i think that's the very uh, important aspect that you brought up harsh so essentially what you're saying that just because you put a name as a nominee doesn't automatically mean that all of that will then uh, get transferred and make the nominee the title holder like you said of uh, the assets uh, in question oh absolutely so suppose my intention was ki my children are adult they are standing on their own feet whatever yeah. are my assets i wanted to go to my spouse that is my intention yeah. today except for the life insurance policy to carry out that intention and to make sure my children don't put a claim i don't think they will but i i'm just uh, taking a lot me as an example okay to make sure that my intention is carried out i have made a will okay and without that will there is a chance that my children can make a claim so surely because my spouse is the nominee she will just get access to the money to the shares to the mutual fund units to the bank account to the property okay and the life insurance claim and except for the life insurance claim which she can retain even if i have no in fact if i have left no will okay in all other assets should my children demand their one third share she will have to give it to them right so essentially the way to make your wishes iron clad uh you know is to have a combination of your nomination as well as a will to sort of specify exactly the timelines and the the process in which you want this transfer of assets uh, to be done to to whoever uh, is is remaining in the family well, absolutely so as i said my intention is that after my death my all my assets should go to my spouse so i have made her my nominee as i said in the five things that i have the property mutual fund units shares a bank account and the life insurance policy okay but i have also written down the will in which i have said that i have these three heirs my spouse and my two children uh, uh, but on my death everything will go to my spouse that's written down in my will and only right. that will enable her to make sure that my children cannot make a claim on those assets okay now let's sort of break this down further let's uh, talk about property uh, first now one thing that we often see in case of property when you have a nominee and uh, assuming there is a will in place even then whenever a property is sold what we often see is there's a ad release in the paper in case anybody you know is trying to make a claim against that property to sort of put that out of the uh, way Uh, why is that necessary in that case this is even though there is a nominee and there is a will yet this happens so i think the ad in the papers is a relatively simpler thing because 
even suppose i am the first purchaser i am not yet dead right i have purchased it from the builder and i am selling okay even then an ad can come especially where the property value is large because you know transmission or death is not the only mode of creating third party rights right i could have for example created a tenancy right okay and that affects the value of the property i could have given some right to somebody else to enjoy the property in return for consideration or without consideration okay mm -hmm. so i think people are just being extra careful ki we gave a public notice okay no such claims have come okay so this isn't relate the ad advertisement that you are talking about isn't related only to inheritance okay yes. it could also be inheritance especially if the uh, title of the person owning it has come through inheritance then it can also be other heirs right but it's not only inheritance this is a standard procedure followed for uh, any transfer including assets held by non individual entities no companies old offices companies old residences even when they sell uh, there will be a ad put out by the purchasers advocates right Uh, so just to go back to another point that you mentioned to make it a little more clearer uh, let's assume that uh, you know you you've nominated your wife and your two children uh, for uh, the certain your investments uh, and you've not left a will uh, so then automatically the laws of inheritance will uh, divide that up one third each uh, amongst all of them is that correct okay so irrespective as i said accepting life insurance policy we'll keep that aside for a minute accepting life insurance policy if i don't leave a will then in my case since my mother is not alive okay in my case my spouse and two adult children they will get one third each that is what the hindu succession act which applies to me says right now uh, what if the children are extremely young and you want to make sure that the property goes to them uh, in case of death uh, how do you then uh, provide for that to make that provision so i think the law uh, which is supposedly there to protect minors okay uh, and especially if they inherit during minority see because please remember when you are writing that will or you know making a nomination uh, at, at that time the beneficiary let us say is a minor it's they, nobody can have an idea whether the beneficiary will remain a minor at that because death nobody can predict yes exactly right? uh, i think the laws although they are there to protect minors the laws are terrible and we have seen and the way in which they are applied actually militates against the minors because i'll give you a very simple example and we have seen these cases and unfortunately covid has brought us face to face with what we thought were completely improbable now think of a young couple right in their early 30s and they have say two minor children yes they hold let us say mutual fund units is the only asset that they hold uh, and you know since they are holding it jointly they feel no nominee is required okay mm. so they don't make a nomination right now both of them died and we have actual cases documented actual cases yeah. where both died right and the children were left high and dry okay mm. because who can become a guardian in the absence of natural guardians which are the parents okay yeah. is a is a subject and especially if there is a dispute if the amounts are large and there can be disputes between maternal sets of grandparents and maternal sets of relatives versus paternal set of relatives and imagine if a lot of money is involved okay hmm. now if we advise the clients let us say ki bhai don't take this risk let's you you know again these are specific examples with specific experience i am giving you yes, uh, yes. couple in the early 30s they have minor children we advise them hold jointly but also make the minors the nominees now the practice is that when you make the minor a nominee you have to specify a guardian yes okay? although that's not what the law says but that is what the mutual funds insist on that is what the dematerialized demat people insist on okay 
so even though the the beneficiary may grow up sometimes we have actually seen cases where the parents don't make them nominees simply because they can't decide on who to make the guardian because the money might be large right and yeah. they can't decide who to trust oh, correct so correct. even though so suppose the minor child at that time was 16 okay and they die 4 years later but you know people forget right mm. 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 they could not make him a nominee at the age of 16 because they could not decide who they wanted to put as a guardian okay right Ch- by the time they died the child was major he need, does not need a guardian even if a guardian has been named it is no longer okay but simply because it was insisted that there be a guardian okay mm. that's a practice it's a procedure it is not the regulation okay right because of that you know those minors were not uh, named as nominees so you know mm-hmm. there is minorities and with immovable property it is even more difficult yes. okay so i think yes. uh, minors inheriting through transmission is a minefield i think that law needs a complete overhaul Yes, absolutely. Uh, and just to take that uh, same example forward, in case where there are minor children, both parents have passed away. Assume that the children have been put as nominees, and there is a guardian uh, that has been uh, named as well. Is it still possible that there could be some other claim uh, by some other relative or in some other capacity being put on that uh, asset or on that property? Is that still possible? Well, of course it is possible because please remember the first thing we started with right nominee nomination is only just a way of passing on possession not title okay so the guardian will get possession on behalf of the minors okay but and i will have to make the example simple okay let us say the there was only one parent one parent had died earlier and the two children were minor okay uh, but if the and the parent is a hindu but his mother and again i have a specific case like that okay i have actually got a client who uh, died in an accident okay mm-hmm. mother uh, alive two minor children and spouse now the mother gets automatically a one fourth share okay because right. uh, the client was a hindu uh, and one fourth share to mother spouse and children uh, so i mean of course she can make a claim let us assume that he had named these two minor children as nominee and named the mother as the guardian okay mm-hmm. the mother of the children as the guardian but his own mother can still take a claim because she is entitled to one fourth of those assets right. absolutely so in, in that case uh, uh, harsh what needs to be done let's talk about property first to ensure that the pro- property that you own is transferred in a smooth manner and you're not ending up you know going to court for years and years where the property is then uh, just stuck because we've seen hundreds of those and thousands of those cases where family members are dispute uh, just have a huge dispute over the property and that property gets stuck so how is the process then made easier what should be done so you know at uh, association of registered investment advisors aria we had uh, published a white paper written by mr uh, pramod rao uh, at the time when he wrote the paper he was chief general counsel of uh, icici group he wrote the white paper in his uh, personal capacity and mr kv kamath the doyon of indian uh, financial sector he has written a foreword for that white paper that white paper is called reimagining nominations making mm. succession smoother and simpler mm. what that white paper says is that the nomination should be treated as a will where no will exists okay yes. because that is being expressed in front of a third party an independent third party so the nomination should be treated as a will it should not require any uh, you know justification uh, it does not have necessarily have to go to court you know ye courts ka 
मेड फेमस बाय बॉलीवुड राइट तारीख पे तारीख तारीख पे तारीख खर्चे पे खर्चा खर्चे पे खर्चा राइट ये होना नहीं चाहिए सो आई थिंक दैट रियली इज द देर आर मेनी अदर रिकमेंडेशन इन द वाइट पेपर बट दैट इज द सेंट्रल रिकमेंडेशन whether yes. it be mutual fund units whether it be sh- shares whether it be any other securities whether it be uh, property okay uh, this turning nominations as a will treating nominations as a will okay is uh, basically something that ought to be done it has already been done for life insurance policies so i had given my example earlier uh, yes. where remember i had one life insurance policy one bank account mutual funds shares and a property okay mm. Mm. if my spouse was a nominee in all of them okay she will get access to all of them but my children can demand a share except life insurance policy if okay. i have not left a will life insurance policy she will enjoy uh, she they my children cannot demand a share in that so i think the one way to avoid legal proceedings avoid the cost avoid the delay is to turn nominations into a will effectively a will right. the choice today is between leaving it to the personal laws okay or actually expressing your will you know hmm. that's why it's called a will i express my will how do i want my assets to be inherited post my death that's why it's called a will right yeah. if i don't exercise my right to make a will then my personal law stake over we are saying let the nomination the white paper says let the nomination, nomination be treated as, as a will, will. Exactly, exactly on the, the lines, lines of, of what has already been done, done for the life insurance act 1938 right Uh, now harsh the other question is uh, in case of liquid investments whether it's mutual funds or uh, anything else uh, if there are any pledges that have been made uh, you know of course there are nominations there is a will but there are pledges what then becomes the protocol uh, that would need to be followed so i think pledges over right the pledge has to be paid off see there are two different things the pledge is a, a pledge a pledge the person in whose favor the pledge yes. is there uh, they retain the right to the extent of amounts due to them or the value of the security so let us say the security is valued at 10 lakhs and the pledge is for a loan of 6 lakhs okay the inheritance proceeds parallelly but the inheritance can get access only after paying off the 6 lakhs of the uh, pledge uh, of the the person in whose favor the pledge is right right okay now the other part is you have of course different asset classes you have property you have uh, you know your mutual funds other investments bank account uh, how does or is there a difference in the way a nominee works the number of nominees you can put down for each of these and then how does that all sort of correlate in the event of a death so this is a patchwork and a quilt of differences okay but they are i mean they are uh, let me tell you starting off with bank accounts that is a, that allows only one now okay i mean and that i think is because that was the pioneer okay and yes. it happened way back in 1980 uh, and you know that time even one nominee was a great thing to do and it they never it never occurred to them that you know you might need multiple nominees okay and then you come to uh, shares or other securities Uh, or you come to mutual fund units they allow three uh, nominations uh, three nominees now mutual fund units also allow nomination in favor of non individuals of a stated category they can be charitable institutions etc okay uh, but otherwise uh, you know they have to be individuals okay they cannot be non individuals the beauty is you go back to the oldest nominee provisions which are in the uh, indian provident fund act what government servants are governed by or the employee provident fund act now those are very so uh, for you if you were working for the government okay hmm. I mean, yes 
even if you wanted to you could not make your own parents as nominee if you are married right right, right? that is what the uh, employee provident fund act provides okay, okay. they define okay. relatives separately for males and separately for females okay separately for married females and separately for unmarried females of course one must remember that all these provisions have come during a different social uh, times right that's right yes but the fact is they have outlasted those times right uh, and i doubt the, the, whether they will survive legal challenge but it is there okay today you can you have to do a nomination in an employee provident fund account okay uh, and if you are married you cannot have your parents as a nominee so i think those need things need to change we need to thoroughly uh, make them so fortunately none of the others have those uh, kind of whether it is banking there the issue is only one nominee because it is laid down in the act uh otherwise three nominees mutual fund being the latest to allow nominees they have more progressive uh, provisions that allows uh, charitable organizations etc to yeah. be nominees you can name anybody as a nominee you're not restricted uh, by their being relatives etc yeah so i think we have seen a progression and i think as a and things have improved dramatically and regulators are making sure that you either nominate or give a clear statement that you will not nominate right but i yes. think that last leap needs to be done of reimagining nomination as a person's will and i think that really will what will make the ease of living index or ease of dying is equal to ease of living i mean because the real your uh, you know your loved ones continue right and for them to get those assets quickly with proper title not just possession but also okay. title i think that requires to reimagine nominations as a will and i we are very hopeful we are doing at aria we are doing lots of advocacy efforts we are very very hopeful that some changes will happen soon so obviously this is uh, quite complicated and not a lot of people realize that nomination is not the solution it's not the answer it is one step but over and above you have to have a will in place uh, to ensure that your intent that your loved ones are secured that all of that is then passed on in a, a manner which is easy and without uh, the hassles of court especially uh, harsh uh, thank you so much for joining us and putting all of that into perspective for our viewers uh, i hope that this has helped you understand the importance of nomination the importance of a will and if you still have any further questions on this or on any other personal finance related issue please do write in to us on investmart@editorg.com and we'll get them answered on the show thank you so much for watching